Welcome to the Halloween collaboration from Lottie Jasmine Designs. Sit back, relax, and take notes. Enjoy. Well, first of all, I need to apologise for that person. I'm not sure where they came from. Hopefully that hasn't put you off watching the rest of the video. <laughs> so we're straight into the demonstration for this one. Hi and welcome to everybody who's watching. If you haven't checked out the rest of the artists, check out the playlist. There's lots of us all doing Halloween themed videos. So we're Lottie Jasmine Designs. We had three of us here. And the person doing the demo today in this video is the lovely Wayne. And he is making some rather lovely skull tea lights holders can you call skulls lovely i suppose you can can't you but what you can see him doing here now this first of all i should say everything used in this kit all bar a couple of things or in this kit in this video all bar a couple of things are from jewels uh from resin jewels and helena from resin detra supplies it it is their um skulls kit we purchased it from them and it is fantastic what is in this kit. So Wayne has so far, what he's done is he's turned one of the molds inside out and he's applied a really lovely sort of tint mica, a twinkle tint, I think it is called, they call it, to the eye sockets of the skull. Now, those of you who are really alert and have noticed, the skull's hands, the bony parts of the skeleton of the hands, are seem to be over the ears. So that will give you a big clue that this is possibly based on the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. And what he's doing is he's applied the pale greeny coloured mica or twinkle tint to the eye socket bit where the where the eye you know the jelly eyeball-y bit would be and then he's shadowing in with that lovely black sort of sparkly tint twinkle tint or my a mix with mica into the outer socket parts and into the indent bit where the nose would be now lots of these sections of this video I'm afraid have been sped up because the whole length of this process and filming was over three hours <laughs> And much as I'm sure you like watching these sorts of things, um, you don't want to sit for three hours and watch us do this. So he's, he's he's happy with the amount that he's put on there and the detail he's done there. So he's just turned the mould inside out. There you are. You can see a bit more of it now. Um, it's a lovely mould. Lots of lovely detail. We did do an unboxing of this kit. If you haven't seen it, why not check it out from the uh, playlist? Now, it looks here like he's moved on to a different mould. So this is the second in the three and he's done exactly the same thing. He's applied the dark mica, a tint to the outer edge of parts of the socket. And now he's going back in with a different colour. This is also from the kit. It's a beautiful purpley tint sort of mixed between a glitter and a tint. So he applied that to the inner parts of the sockets and now he's going round just picking out some other details on the mould that he wants to be. Uh, black or a much darker so he's just literally picking out the details he carried on doing that with that mold he also then did that with the third mold which we've not shown you because to be honest once you've seen the process once you don't then need to see it another two or three times the resin he's mixed up is a one-to-one -one mixing ratio um, he's added in some buff titanium buff titanium colored acrylic paint now we quite often use acrylic paints as uh, pigments for tints and colorings for our resin the resin he's used is tea expert it's a one-to-one -one mixing ratio and it always works really well for us we recommend that brand we don't get paid by, uh, by them by the way at all at all um but it's just one that we like using now decided that this is too dark yellowy colored because he was looking very much like for like an old skull bone colour. So he's added in a bit of white acrylic paint. Remember, if you're going to add paint and things into your clear resin, make sure you don't add in more than 10% of the volume. Otherwise, you'll have a problem with it when it's curing. So he then poured the 
uh, resin, the coloured resin, into each of the moulds and let them cure for about, I think he did it for about a day and a half. Because over here in the UK, it's much, much cold. It's horrible and rainy, but it's much, much colder. So things are taking longer to cure unless you have um, a heat mat or a propagation mat was one of the things that was recommended to us uh, recently. So as you can see there, that's much more like a, bow, a bone type of colour. Uh, poured in up to a certain level, gave it a little squidge to try and disperse any air bubbles that may have got trapped or formed, although it looks like there's only a few tiny little bubbles in this. And then carefully filled it up to the top surface or the very top of the mould. Put them all to one side and again this is a day and a half later so this is when just showing you. So we did show you the demold of all three moulds. Now this is the first one and these are the first time we've used these moulds. They're very good, they're quite malleable so um, and stretchy so not too much of a problem demolding. All the mica and tint powders look like they've gone, that nothing's been left behind in the mould. So look at that. So this is one of them. So this is the see no evil. Now we've got a few little bubbles around the edge there, but to be honest with you, it doesn't detract from this design. So this is a see no evil. So the skeleton's hands are over his eyes. So not a lot of detail that you can put on the eyes for this one because obviously you can't see them. So details would be on decorating the hands and so on. This was the Hear No Evil. So this was the one where he opted for the greeny coloured eye socket, you know, where the eyeball would go. Uh, <laughs> and then the darker powder around the outside. So this is the Hear No Evil. So we've done See No Evil, Hear No Evil. And any moment now you'll see the Speak No Evil. So there we go. There we go. So the moulds came away really well and very easily. Look at that. See, that would be absolutely fine on its own, but we are going to show you video footage of him decorating. They're just putting some more decoration on them. Look at those. So, yeah, there's a few patchy bits, but it's it's it doesn't detract from the design and the overall finished piece. So this was the third mould. So we've got see no evil, hear no evil, this is speak no evil. This is the one where he used the purpley coloured twinkle tint in the eye, the jelly, you know, the eye socket bit where your the eyeball would be. And it didn't pick up as well as he wanted it to. So there's a solution for that, which you will see shortly. But this is a speak no evil. So the skeleton's hands are across his mouth. There we go. But altogether, they really, they really cured very, very well. A few little bubbles, as we said, but it doesn't detract at all from the finished piece. So here we go. Trying to balance all three of them to get them in shot was quite difficult. So there we go. Speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil. The terrible trio. <laughs> so this next bit, we used um, a mixture of pigments. Um, it's just showing you there, Vista Red Pigment. We also showed you an acrylic ink there. We didn't use that, but we're going to use it uh, to mix into some UV resin. So everything that we have used in this uh, video today will be linked in the description box. Obviously, we'll give you uh, details of Jules at Resin Jewels and Helena at Resin Detra Supplies uh, socials. You can catch them on Instagram. They've got um, uh, websites as well. I don't know if this kit would still be available, if they'll be able to put one together for you. Uh, but certainly do check out their, their, um, their accounts on Instagram. They you know they're always uploading uh, reels and so on and do check out also their website which shows all their products that they currently have on offer they also do something called scoops which is usually about once a month and that's great fun great great fun right so Wayne has added quite a lot of the red uh, Vista pigment paste into it and mixed it into the UV resin and he's got a micro brush here now these are really really handy uh definitely worth investing in although i say investing they're very cheap you can get them from amazon or you can also get them from other online uh, stockists such as timu if you uh, have an account or if you if you uh, shop with timu you can get them from there and they're relatively inexpensive but incredibly handy for doing detailed work like this so what wayne decided to do was to paint on 
some detail using this beautiful red. And this was, I suppose, to reflect more the gory side of things. Now, this next bit then has been sped up because this whole process, you know, take your time. Uh, Wayne certainly took his time to make sure that he got everything where he wanted it to be. Now, he started off using a UV torch to um, cure up the UV resin, but decided to opt then for a much larger UV resin lamp because it was a bit lot, quite a lot more powerful, just to finish curing that up. So yeah, so the, the red is supposed to signify, should we say more, the blood and gore element. So yes, as you've probably gathered, this is not a nice, sweet, cute, cuddly Halloween thing uh, that he's creating. It's more on the horror side of things. There we go. So he's just adding in now some more detail with the red, drawing in these lines, supposed to be, I suppose, to signify blood, veins, that sort of thing, you know, all the gore type stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, Wayne particularly likes horror films, so this was right up his, uh, this was in his ballpark to do this. So there we go, he's just added on some more, another one with some more detail and he is curing it using the UV lamp. We purchased this one from Timu. Of course, they're available uh, on online, Amazon um, and various other stockists. But this one does the job really, really well for us. And there we go. So that's that piece so far. He then went on and added some more of that with the red detail. He's now doing the teeth. Now, this guy really needs a dentist. <laughs> He's mixed up um, some yellow. Uh, he found some yellow pigment and added it, or yellow paint, uh, acrylic paint, and added it into the UV resin. Mixed it up really well, got the colour he wanted. I think he mixed in a little bit of white pigment as well in there, pigment paste. Uh, these are Vista ones that he's used, and he's just painting it onto the teeth of the skeleton. So like I said, this guy needs a, a decent toothbrush, some good toothpaste, and a dentist. <laughs> but yeah, so all he's done is exactly the same process as he did when he was putting on the red sort of vein-like details. Now he's just putting on some detail into the knuckle parts of the hands of the skeleton. And he will also then cure it. Now, Wayne's not wearing gloves, but his hands aren't going anywhere near the actual resin. Of course, if I was doing this, I would be wearing gloves. Um, do make sure that whenever you're working with resin or mica powders, pigments and so on, that you wear gloves, particularly if you're working with resin. Um, you do not want, you want to avoid at all costs it coming into contact with your skin. Uh, if it does come in contact with your skin, do go straight away and wash it. Uh, wash it off your skin just using regular soap and lukewarm water and keep washing it until you can't feel it on your skin anymore. Obviously, you don't make your skin raw though. Right, there we go. Obviously, also when you're working with resin, do make sure that you follow all of the guidelines, the manufacturer's guidelines with how you use it, the environment that you use it in. So in other words, a well-ventilated area and that you wear the gloves and you protect your clothing, the surface areas in which you're working, and also that you wear a respirator mask. There we go. So he's done the hands with the yellow and the teeth. Lovely teeth. And now he's going back in over the hands with some more of the red. And just very carefully. Now he's using, still using a micro brush, but this one hasn't got the little foam brushy part on the end of it. So it gives a really detailed line and area. It's, it's a bit like drawing with the end of a cocktail stick. <laughs> so it does take time. Um, it's quite a lot of detail in these pieces that he's done. He does, um, he, he really likes doing this kind of thing. Um, He's a lot better at it than I am. He's got a lot more patience, Wayne has, than I have with making things um, like this, with this kind of level of detail. But look at that. See, 
because this is the theme it is, it doesn't matter if it's pristine, straight lines. It's absolutely fine if you've got a little bit of, for want of a better term, bleeding of the resin. <laughs> Uh, if you can see what I'm, I think you can see what I mean just about there. Um, it's absolutely fine because it looks very intentional. <laughs> Which if you ask Wayne, he'd probably tell you, yes, that was definitely intentional. So there we go. Hopefully you're enjoying uh, watching the collaboration, the playlist of with all the other resin artists. Uh, we do hope you are. If you've got, if you're with us in the premiere and joining us in the live chat, hi to everybody in the live chat. If you're not in the live chat, but you, I mean, obviously, if you're watching us and you found us because you're one of our subscribers, hi to all our subscribers. We really appreciate you tuning in uh, and watching us. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Drop us a comment. Do you think that Wayne did an excellent job? I do. I'm a bit biased, you know, but I think he's doing an excellent job here. Uh, what colours would you use? What theme would you go with? Would you do completely different colours? Would you make it more 3D? Would you add... I did say to him about adding some black roses, but he... He opted not to do that. See, that's the kind of thing I would do. This is how we differ slightly with our ideas on things. Um, yeah. And if you're not one of our subscribers and you've just found us because you've been watching the other artists, why not subscribe to our channel? We upload three videos a week. Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays at 5pm UK time. We do all kinds of things. We follow themes. We might work with specific types of colours. We might look at the different seasons during the year and so on. Um, you know, and it's usually a how to how to make type of style of videos. Um, and sometimes, like today, we take part in collaborations. So Wayne is now using a very fine tipped acrylic in acrylic paint pen in black and he's just applying some outline to those rather fetching teeth <laughs> there we go and again it doesn't matter if you make a little mistake you or there's a little bit of a bleed from the ink in the pens because it looks intentional which is good and there we go also now just adding a bit of blood red there of this uv resin so I think the idea here, from what he told me, was the fact that, and this is quite gruesome, this next bit, it's his, the eyes have been removed, because obviously this is the see no evil, and the blood in between the skeleton bones of the fingers is supposed to signify, obviously, the eye socket's bleeding. Although everybody knows skeletons don't bleed, but there we are. So uh, hopefully not too horrific if you've got children watching with you. I should have probably given you a warning at the beginning that this is not the cutesy, cutesy side of Halloween. This is more your uh, horror type side of Halloween. Well, project anyway. So there we go. He's just finishing off doing those. Almost looks like little miniature rubies on those teeth. Um, maybe it is. <laughs> so there we go. And he's just going to cure the whole thing now. So he carried on and he completed, um, oh, he hasn't carried on and completed it. What he's now done is, because I don't think, yeah, the nose part he did say to me he didn't think was dark enough. So he mixed, mixed up some of that beautiful green powder that you saw in with some UV resin again. And he's just applying it in there to where the nasal, the nose would have been of the skeleton. There we are. And that does, that gives it more of an intensity. It's quite a nice colour, actually, that. <laughs> Beautiful. Dare I say, almost Christmas-like, that colour. Yes, I used the C word, everybody. Christmas. Christmas-like. That will be the next thing on the agenda, or the Christmas makes happening. So anyway, hope you're enjoying this video. It is uh, 26 minutes in length, which we appreciate is quite a lengthy uh, period of time. But if you're still with us, we do appreciate you watching. We also understand if you want to pause the video and come back and watch the rest of it at another time. But hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, we certainly enjoyed um, making these uh, doing the we do, do we do the whole thing in house? We make the projects. We discuss what we're going to make. We make the projects. We video it ourselves. We edit it ourselves. And as you can hear me now, I am now doing the voiceover part of it, 
and we also do all our own social media. This is our hobby, although we were very lucky very recently to be monetized by, or to meet the requirement to be monetized by YouTube, which is really nice. So who knows, one day in about 10 years time, we might get a check for a couple of pounds. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. So all Wayne's doing now, so he applied the greeny coloured resin, pigmented resin to the outside parts there of the eye sockets. And now he's applying some white, little white lines. I think these are supposed to like represent more sort of like cracks in the skull or nerves and all that sort of thing. And he all he's done is he's coloured some UV resin with some white pigment. And he's using that very fine micro brush there to uh, put in the detail where he wants it to be. There we are. So yes, yeah, so lots of steps in this one, in this whole process. He does repeat the process, not exactly the same, but the same processes with the other two skulls as well. And you will see all three of them if you haven't already seen them at the beginning of the video or in the thumbnail, all three of them together. And they look absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So I'm just curing up that part. So there you can see he's done some yellow on this one as well, this particular one. Now, the one of the almost final things he's doing here is applying some of these rather lovely black holographic sort of bats. Now, they're sort of, now some people call these uh, table sprinkles. I would like to refer to them as confetti glitter. Although a lot of people think confetti is just for weddings. You wouldn't be throwing bats at a wedding, I wouldn't have thought. Bat confetti? Maybe. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, these, yeah, these are these lovely bats. Again, this came in the kit, these did. And Wayne is applying them using CA glue. So that's an activated glue. Uh, you can use any type of glue that you would normally use or what you happen to have. Um, but we found this, this literally, you put the tiniest drop on and um, then what you do, so you put the tiniest drop on, Wayne's just spreading a little bit more around, I think. The only problem I found with this is then trying to remember where you've put the glue because it's completely clear. And then within a matter of moments, and I mean literally like a second or two, as soon as you, normally as soon as you've put that piece on there, that little bat, it will adhere within a matter of a second to the to the skull, to whatever you're trying to stick it to. And you'll see, because of course that's fallen down there now, and now he's sort of chasing it around, trying to get it to move so that he can then place it where he wanted it to go and not where it's landed. But these lovely bats, so they're black when you look at them in one particular, when you look at them from one angle, they might be green from another, or there you can see the holographic, there we go. You can see the holographic effect more there. Orange, green, purples, blacks. But he wanted just, just it was just, he just thought these skulls needed just that little something extra. Of course, up to you if you decide to go this far with the details. He's just flicked a bat off somewhere across his workspace. Um, now, obviously, if you're going to use glue of any kind, be please do be careful that you don't stick your fingers to your project, which is, if I'd been doing this, I would have done that at least twice by now. <laughs> But Wayne, is, is, uh, Wayne, as I said before, is, is really good. He, that, ne nothing like that ever seems to happen to him. Or should we just say, not that he's included in his footage, the film footage. So there we go. That bit, no, it looks like it didn't stick completely. So he's just re, he's just re lifted it. He was able to lift it, reposition it. And then just smooth it down again. Again, this is a micro brush that has had its the little foamy bit on the end has been removed. So it's a lot more firm. Now, he did find some of these lovely eyes. We've used these once before in a project. Um, and all he's done is, is placed them, decided on the colour that he wanted. 
placed it where he wanted and then added some of that glue, the same glue that he used to stick the bats on. And he did this for the um, hear no evil and speak no evil. Obviously no point in doing it for the see no evil because the skulls, the skulls are, um, skeleton hands are over its eyes. But yeah, he's just then put in, popping in a little, a little, little tiny few little more drops of the glue just to completely secure them in place. There we go. Now, parts of these skulls are glow in the dark, um, but we don't have footage of that. Now, here you go. This is the final shot, everybody. These are our lovely see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil skulls, along with their little skeleton friends. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope you've enjoyed this video um don't forget to like share and subscribe it was great to take part in this collaboration with all of the other artists for its halloween theme looking forward to the next one which i think is in november or december and i think that one's going to be possibly christmas themed so take care everyone enjoy the rest of the videos as i said before don't forget to like share and subscribe and a happy Halloween, everybody.